Activity ratios are really helpful with financial statement analysis, and that's because they tell us how good the company is at performing certain types of activities. That's why activity ratios are also called efficiency ratios. They tell us how efficient is this company when it comes to using its assets to generate sales, and that's the asset turnover. Or how efficient is the company when it comes to collecting its accounts receivable promptly or selling its inventory quickly. So asset turnover, let's just start with that, is actually a component of ROA. Okay, and we'll talk about this in a later video. We can decompose return on assets into profit margin and asset turnover. So asset turnover or sales efficiency times the company's profit margin, which is its ability to manage its costs and expenses and keep them low. The product of these two is the company's return on assets. So we've got sales efficiency here with asset turnover, or we could say, let's take the sales and just divide it by our productive assets, property, plant, and equipment. And that is our fixed asset turnover. Because maybe we say, you know what? Total assets includes things like goodwill and so and we don't necessarily expect that to map into, uh, you know, increased sales or anything. So we just want to say, let's just take a look at the fixed assets and how good are they at generating sales. So we've covered the fixed asset turnover and the asset turnover. The other three uh, activity ratios I have here all have to do with working capital accounts specifically. We've got accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable. So accounts receivable, how many times a year is the company collecting its average receivable balance? Inventory turnover, how many times a year are they selling through the inventory? And payable turnover, how many times a year are they turning over the payables? And then you could also calculate these on a quarterly basis. But I've done some annual uh, analysis here. And I actually com did some comparisons for a couple companies that you might know. They're both consumer products companies, Kimberly Clark and Colgate Palmolive. I picked them because they're in the same industry. So I thought it'd be comparable. Okay? And so I, I did some analysis for the year ended December 31st, 2020. I just have one year of data for each company. Now... Let's start with the asset turnover and fixed asset turnover. Kimberly Clark and Colgate Palmarv were pretty close. Each of them has generated slightly over $1 of sales for every dollar of average total assets. Now, when it came to fixed asset turnover, clearly Colgate Palmolive had more of an advantage. They were doing a better job using their property, plant, and equipment to generate sales. Now, let's get to working capital. So we've got the receivables, the inventory, and the accounts payable. These are three of the most important ratios that we're gonna be calculating because it's very important for these companies to collect the receivables as quickly as they can and sell the inventory as quickly as they can. And, it, and matter of fact, these things, we're, what we're gonna do because it's a little bit hard. When you just look at Kimberly Clark and you see 8.51 for account receivable turnover, it might be hard to really understand like, okay, well, they collect the receivables eight and a half times a year. Here's what I like to do, and this is very common. So you just take 365 and divide it by 8.51, and that's gonna give you 43. This is something called day sales outstanding. That's the amount of days it takes to collect the receivables on average. So basically, they, they have a receivable from a customer. Let's say they sell something to Walmart. It takes, on average, 43 days for them to collect payment fr from the customer. So they made a sale. takes 43 days for that to turn into cash. So I recommend when you do account receivable turnover, inventory turnover, and payable turnover, you take 365. Okay, so 365 divided by this is this here. Okay, 365 divided by 6.67, that is going to be 55 days to sell inventory. Okay, and then finally, the account payable turnover, take 365 divided by this, and that's going to be the amount of days it takes them to, to pay their suppliers. Now, you might be wondering, by the way, uh, so I had up here in the, in the formula, purchases from suppliers on credit. You might be wondering how to calculate that. You just take the company's cost of goods sold, uh, you add their ending inventory balance and then subtract their beginning inventory balance. So this right here, just if you're if you're wondering, that's how you calculate purchases from suppliers on credit. Now, let's get back to our analysis, these working capital ratios. So I recommend that when you do the, these uh, the turnover ratios, that you actually convert them to the number of days instead of just thinking how many times a year does the company sell through its inventory. So let's I'm going to focus on the analysis here then. In terms of day sales outstanding, so how long does it take to collect the receivables? Colgate Palmolive is collecting in just 30 days, where it's taking 43 days for Kimberly Clark to be able to collect. So Colgate Palmolive has an advantage there. When it comes to days to sell inventory, though, 
Kimberly Clark is dominating just 55 days to sell their inventory compared to Colgate Palmolive of 87. So Kimberly Clark has a clear advantage here. And if you add these together, right, so the 43 and the 55, so that'd be 98. And what that is, is that's the company's operating cycle. And I'm going to make another video on this, but just a quick preview. The operating cycle is basically how long does it take the company to sell the inventory and then collect cash from the customer? Okay, so that's that's and then if you subtract this, if you subtract the 94, you get something called the cash conversion cycle. We're, I got another video. I'm going to make another video on that. So hang tight. Uh, but I just want to give you a quick, quick little preview there. So advantage definitely in terms of selling the inventory kimberly clark able to sell it a lot faster than colgate paul Mollet. this is going to be very important when it comes to cash management for the company okay now days payable outstanding so what why you want these two so you want you, you want to collect quickly from your customers you want to sell the inventory quickly with days payable outstanding you don't necessarily want this to be a low number actually the higher the better within Within reason, you can't uh, you can't just never pay your suppliers, right? They'll eventually stop sending you inventory on credit. Uh, but in terms of a financing strategy, if you can delay payment of your vendors, um, you know, in, in some cases that can actually be a good financing strategy. Now, if you're giving up some kind of significant discount that they offered you, if you had paid on time, then that's another scenario. I don't want to get into this. This isn't a finance video, but I just want to let you know that it isn't necessarily a bad thing here that Kimberly Clark has uh, taken longer to pay their suppliers than Colgate Palm Olive. Now, Kimberly Clark suppliers uh, might not be too happy about that, but in any event, uh, just give a little backstory there. So, the advantage in terms of collecting the receivables goes to Colgate Palm Olive. In terms of selling the inventory quickly, Kimberly Clark, and Kimberly Clark has the advantage of that they have an extra 23 days before they have to pay their suppliers than does Colgate Palm Olive.